welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Grab your vices, get ready to chill like we always do. Um, it's time to get live, raw, and direct on episode four of Straightforward with Miss B. And again, this week, I have my special guest co host, AG, on the line representing Birmingham, Alabama. What's up, AG? You ready to talk some shit today, baby? <laughs> you done came in like Arsenio Hall back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. Direct, baby. Uh, child, you telling our age now. <laughs> <laughs> you telling oh, yeah. our age. Age, if you know, young folks don't know know nothing about Arsenio Hall back in the day. That was comedy at at its best on the Arsenio Hall show. Oh yeah. Well, today, you guys, tell you we got a good show for you. It's going to be a bit more on the um, informative side, informative side. But as you know, we definitely going to have some laughs. Um, in between there, um, to start off, I guess we'll go into my, my weekend recap. I didn't have much going on, spent some time with my grandmother this weekend. Um, I did a lot of binge watching. I was on Netflix all weekend. I was catching up on, um, I didn't even know Netflix actually had, uh, a, a, their own version of Unsolved Mysteries. Did you know that? No, I ain't never seen that before. You remember Unsolved Mysteries, though, back in the 80s? Oh, yeah. The oh, show yeah. with had the little scary music they play at the beginning and stuff. Right, that's um, before First 48, ain't it? Way before four. <laughs> yeah, way before, <laughs> way, way, way before First 48. But, yeah, Netflix have their own version of it. I guess it's supposed to be more updated stories. So I was binge-watching that. Um, Also saw um, another series called The Puppet Master, which was very interesting. It was about a con man um, over in Europe. He was a con man, and he he told this crazy story, crazy story of being part of, like, he told people he was a secret spy. Uh, I think it's called an MI-15 or an M-15 secret spy. But anyway, he would tell this outrageous story, and he would tell it basically to women, like gullible women, and they would end up giving him, you know, their his their money, all their money. So he ended up just, you know, being on the run and 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 you know, finessing finessing women out of their money. <laughs> Hello, you still there? I'm here. Well, okay, okay, okay. I'm listening to you talk about that man in that movie. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I you take really didn't have nothing else to do this weekend. You I didn't have that. really <laughs> nothing, yeah, as you can see. I didn't have much going on. Um, yeah, so like I said, once I start watching something and, and it's good and interesting to me, I'll continue to watch it. I also got a chance to watch um, this other kind of movie. I mean, these series really – only have maybe like four or five episodes a piece, so it, it's not nothing to really watch it, you know. Just knock a couple of hours out of your day, and then this. Yeah, once you start watching them series, man, you if it's interesting, you'll sit there and, and watch it all day if you got time. Right, exactly. And I um, watched this other one. I guess I was really on my crime, you know, murder type film stuff this weekend, but I watched something called Crime Scene. Um, basically, it's called the Times Square Murders. Um, so back in the 70s and 80s, it was a guy who was an engineer. And he he basically would go around um, killing and, and killing and torturing prostitutes. And he did it. He did it for years. So they ended up when the New York, you know, police department and everything, he ended up, you know, serving like a life. I think he got 200 years, something like that. But that was just for, like, 11 or 12 murders, right? Mm. So 40 40 years later, well, not 40 years, but maybe, like, 30 years later, he then confessed to more than 80 murders. 
So wow. it's a lot of women. And this, you know, he, he was murdering women way back since the 60s. And so um, it's a lot of, it's, it's, I'm sure it's a lot of uh, Jane Doe cases out there that, you know, this man definitely may have been responsible for. That and people that just. Right, right, right. So yeah, that's basically what I got into this weekend. What 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 happened in your on your weekend? Was it exciting? I'm sure it was more exciting than mine. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I'm sorry to say you beat me out because all I did was work. Oh wow, yes. I mean, it's tax season for everybody who did not know. Um, Ag does have a tax with tax preparation and credit repair business in Birmingham, and it's what it's called all in one. All in one tax and credit repair services. Well, we will serve you and maximize your refund. We can be reached at area code 205 2503. Oh, this nigga here trying to get himself free pro. <laughs> <laughs> you asked, I had to let you know. <laughs> I didn't tell you to say all of that, though. No. Your phone number, your address, uh, your website. <laughs> Ain't nobody tell you to do all that. <laughs> I'm gonna let you slide, but I'm gonna have to keep. I'm gonna charge you now from here on out, <laughs> just so you know. You know, I, I'm yeah, all about fun. my coins. All about my coins. All right. Well, glad you. At least you was very productive this weekend. Yeah, I got something now. Yeah, it's tax season, and which reminds me, I need to start gathering up my papers. And but usually, I'm pretty good at. Um, well, my mom used to work for the IRS. Way, 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 way back in the day. Um, so I, she kind of taught me how to do taxes growing up as a teenager and young adult. Um, so I need to gather my stuff up so I can get get ready to file my taxes this year. But for everybody who, you know, it's that time of year. Hopefully, everybody is being responsible. You know, filing their taxes, especially, you know, if they live here in the U.S., is very important. We don't want anybody going to prison or have to, you know. Or getting gun or she, where they take it. Well, exactly. We don't need, we don't need your it. money garnished. So do what you got to do. But, yeah, so today, like I said, I wanted to kind of be a little bit informative today because, you know, uh, it's a lot of people out there who don't necessarily take the time out to watch the news or, you know, they're not big readers or anything like that. But I came across something that I thought was very, I think it's exciting, it's positive, and um, I just think that it will be something very beneficial to our community and what I'm speaking of is the new test trial that's going on, um, the biotechnology slash pharmaceutical company Moderna. Um, they actually started their test trial on their new um, experimental HIV vaccine. And I thought that was so interesting, so interesting. So basically, this vaccine would be, you know, if the if the test trial goes, you know, good and, and positive and it's successful, um, this will be the first ever vaccine. Um, of course, for those who may be a little ignorant, this is it would not be a vaccine to to totally cure someone of HIV or AIDS. Um, but this is going to be a vaccine, you know, such as COVID in a sense, that will help individuals um, keep themselves safe from contracting it. So it's basically, that's long overdue, right? This is long, long, long overdue. I <laughs> <laughs> was still in high school when AIDS came out. <laughs> This is long, long, long overdue. Now, mind you, this is not for AIDS. Like, AIDS is like the final stop, you know? Okay, you said HIV. HIV okay. progresses itself into AIDS if someone is not, you know, taking the available medications that's out there. To, like I said, they, they have to uh, wash the viral loads and 
making sure they're eating and exercising. And if you're not, you know, staying on that healthy lifestyle plan and you and you are, you know, living with HIV, then, yes, it will progress on to the last stages, which is AIDS. So basically just pulling up this uh, little article I found on ABC News. Um, So for those who don't know, so worldwide, as of 2020, there's about 38 million people, um, which includes 1.3 million people in the United States alone who are living with HIV. And, you know, being diagnosed with HIV <coughs> back in the day was, you know, once considered a death sentence, you know, right. especially during the, um, you know, late 80s, m- uh, mid-1990s. It was about 50,000 deaths that occurred every year, you know, from people who were suffering from the disease. Um, but today, you know, with the medical advances and everything, you know, having HIV now is much more manageable. Um, there's medications such as PrEP um, that they offer as well. Like I said, that those things help reduce the viral loads um, to an undetectable state um, so that someone who currently has HIV, they won't be able to transmit it on to, you know, their partner, whoever they're, they're sleeping with. And so this Moderna, this new Moderna um, vaccine that will hopefully, like I said, be successful after their trial runs and, you know, be offered to to the masses, to, you know, to the public. I think they said it's going to be about, for the trial run, there was 56 people total um, that was included in this trial run. Basically, um, out of the 56 volunteers, 48 of them will receive one or two doses um, of this HIV vaccine. And then 32 also will receive a booster on top of the one to two doses. And the remaining eight volunteers will only receive the booster. So they'll be basically you know, assessing these individuals during these six-month trial run to see how it affects or, you know, hopefully everything, hopefully everything uh, turns out good and they, and it shows and proves that it works. It don't seem like there's much interest, 58 people. (laughs) No, it's not, this is not a public thing. These are 56 people that volunteered themselves and their bodies to this, this is a test trial on the vaccine. This hasn't been made public or finalized. This is a test trial, but this is the first time ever that, like I said, a company has developed a vaccine, but they're just testing it out now. And so it's 56 people who have volunteered for the test. See what I'm saying? I guess. You got it. It just sounds like a low number. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. You say one, you say a million, one point some people got it. So, okay. Yeah, but they, you know, the last thing they want to do is put out something that doesn't work. You know, start, you know, injecting people with a vaccine, 38 million people. Who knows what type of effect it will have on 38 million people. It may not work. Right. You know, so. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, and that's pretty much what happened with any type of uh, new drug, new medication, you know, new vaccine. They always, these companies, they have to have a trial, they have to do trial runs on people who volunteer themselves or most times they, w- they will use, you know, monkeys or some type of test animal. And then once it proves to you know be effective on the the animals then they will go toward the humans to see the effects of these medications on humans first before they before it goes public basically okay so they did the 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 animal test already 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now okay. it passed that part. Now it's going to see how it, uh, you know, how the human body takes it. But um, one thing I was thinking about just having this, this discussion, because, of course, HIV <coughs> is derived from, you know, contracting it during unprotected sex. Now, we live in a world where sex has always been on the forefront of everything, just, you know, sexuality. Um, we see it on our television shows and films, in our, you know, in music as well. Everything is so sexualized. And not only does it, you know, just kind of impact the way people think about sex in general from an adult standpoint kids you know it's it's a lot of kids out here that continues to have that is having unprotected sex and continue and and even though we can have a million commercials come on you know television hey you know you don't want to catch this std and you know all these prevention prevention commercials and things like that or pamphlets you may see around people it's like people still it's like they don't care. Now I got a question. Mhm. You think these young people know about HIV? You're saying did they know or do they know? Do they know? Hell yeah, they know about they talk they talk about it in school. They know about HIV. They better. Now, I'm just saying cuz this kind of faded away to me. I mean, you know at first, you know when it first came out it was out like the coronavirus. And then it just, it like it just, I ain't going to say it went away because we know it didn't go away, but it just faded to the background. I mean, when you say faded, you mean the number of maybe You're people. Lo- it, the number of people just them talking about it. I, because it became not normalized, but. I mean, everything else just kind of take precedent, especially when it comes to, like, media stuff. You, I mean, you got your Hollywood scandals. You got your tea, you, you know, gossip and right. things of that nature. And that type of stuff just start becoming um, what we talk about more, normal. you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's the normal stuff that people just normally talk about. But, it, it I mean, it's it's sad if you really right. think about it. But it is still on the forefront now in the heterosexual community. Maybe not so much the discussion because anything you t- anytime you're talking about like sex related topics um, and and diseases, the heterosexual community looks at it as taboo. You know, we don't really talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We don't talk about it like amongst friends at the cookout and you know all that type of shit. But if you speak to someone that's, you know, part of the LGBTQ, I think it's IA community. <laughs> what the IA stand for? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But, you know, I will I will have my gay friends on the show, you guys, because I do have gay friends. Um, and we de- there's a lot of discussions that we need to have, especially heterosexuals and the gay community. We need to start kind of building these bridges and bridges and you know, right? Getting along, you know, but um, but yeah, if you, I mean, I'm sure if you in the part of the gay community, then the HIV and AIDS talk is still something that's prominent in that community. They hear about it a lot. They know about, like I said, the medication um prep that they usually, you know, that helps you become undetectable and. So they, I'm sure they talk about it all the time, more on their side than you know than on the in the heterosexual community side. But regardless, regardless of the sides, right? There's right. still a large percentage of of demographics that are being affected with HIV, and and it it just needs to stop. There's a lot more women. There's a lot more kids. That are contract uh, contracting um, HIV, and that's that. I mean, it's it's scary. 
That's right. scary. You got a lot of women who talk may talk about um, them contracting HIV, and they they're in their their mind in their lives. They're th- it's just regular, normal kind of housewife type of situation. But yet they may have a man that's stepping out on them. That man, you hear about stories of men living on the down low, and they may be contracting, you know, these STIs and STDs and, and HIV and, and bringing it home to their wives. You, I mean, the, these type of stories are out there. Oh, yeah. That ain't nothing new. That's nothing new. And it's it's so scary to think about. It's like, how do we how how do we how do we get people just to take the usage of protection more seriously? Like everybody be talking about, okay, when I have sex and I hear this like from you know, from the guys, they say it just fe- you know, it feels better, especially when it comes to like the uses of condoms. They say it, it feels better without a condom, right? Of course. And even for women as well, you know, even on our side, we we in certain situations the the condoms become a little, you know, irritable after a while, and you don't necessarily want to use it. But you, I mean, but you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, "Hey, I don't want to get pregnant. I don't want to catch a disease." Um, so you you know you continue to it. use it. You just deal you deal with it. But think about how many people that, you know, having sex and they're using protection, but it's 10 times more people that's not. And they, they're, people are just out here fucking. Skin to skin, knee to knee. Mm-hmm. Getting it in. And more so the young people. I swear it seems like more and more young people I see, you know, I see a lot more like, teenage pregnancies then you might have people on on um you might have people on the internet you know spilling tea about somebody you know giving them herpes or it's just it, it's right, it's right, so right. much <laughs> and you think the percentage of, is, is that why yeah man i think i was reading somewhere like they said Maybe fifty three percent of HIV, um, people with HIV is like women and kids. But the women and kids got it. They they getting it from somewhere, right? And I know, especially in the South, that's it's like sex is just definitely a way of life. Everybody's having sex. Oh, yeah. So what do you think? What do you think? How can we encourage people to use protection? Do we need more commercials on TV? Do we need to put up more billboards? Do we need to do like a scare straight type of? Yeah, the scare tactic. I'm with the scare tactic. Like, yeah, start making them commercials again. You you know what I'm saying? And the billboards. All that stuff, the scare tactic, you could, that's the only way you're going to stop somebody from doing something. You got to scare them. And then some people you can't scare, but some people you can. I'm a more scare tactic person. That's a, what about the music? On me. But what about the music? We see that, you know, the music has an effect on the younger adults, the millennials as well do i mean do you think that if maybe rappers and 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 people and maybe you know singers and stuff like that who make like freaky type of music start talking about protection more in their music would that help we could come up with something like that where you like okay everybody need to make a song so they're gonna use the condoms or something Mm -hmm. like what you call that a we are the world a we are the world for condoms (laughs) I'm like, yeah, like a little <laughs> campaign on that or something. Everybody need to mention a condom in they in they work. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine what that sound like. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an artist, you can come up with a way to slide it in there, though. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And make it sound like it's supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to be like, yeah, you know, how Dion Warwick and Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones. You don't need to be like no, we are the world. Everybody don't need to be on the same song. That's, that's <laughs> what. <laughs> oh, you said you said everybody had their own individual song. Right. Got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. So I'll come up with a condom song. We are the condoms. <laughs> Stop by the store and got me a pack. Stop by the store and got me a pack of Mm -hmm. magnums. Something like that. Just slide it in there like that. Oh, my God. Okay. Man, please be brave. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it'll take take a long while before, you know, especially when it comes to millennials and stuff. It's going to take, it'll take them a minute to. Man, they do whatever a rapper say. So if Jay Z came out with a song, if Jay Z came out with a song, Jay Z is not a millennial. millennial no, I'm saying, but he's very influential. Right. We don't Lil want baby. just any rapper saying this shit. We need somebody Lil that's. Baby. Yeah. Lil okay. If if Lil Baby came out with a song and said, "Y'all niggas need to start strapping up." Kodak. Kodak. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, need people like, like that. Cardi B, you know what I'm saying? Cardi B, <laughs> yeah, I can okay. dig it. You know what I'm saying? The hot rappers, not these. I don't think Jay-Z going to make it down up to the 25 or 26 year old. Mm, I know. Yeah, nah. Maybe, like, it, it'd have to be, like, NBA Young Boy. Yeah. Maybe even Soldier Boy. <laughs> 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 He's a soldier a, boy. A, a soldier a boy, tell him. Mm, mm, mm. Soldier boy. Wake up out the bed, get my swag on. I put that condom on. I said, What's up? <laughs> hey, we getting money. <laughs> there you go. Just now. Now they sang it in the song when they in the car. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's funny. So yeah, I think that'd be a good a good way to go about it is having the influence influencers um incorporated, you know, in their art. And that'll right. help encourage especially the young people to start using protection. Now more. More protection, right. Now for Speaking of protection, though, it's some it's some uh, adults out here in this world who's clearly not using protection. Oh yeah, a lot of them. And this is evident because they keep dropping babies everywhere. They might do it the first time, maybe the second, but after that, they ain't gonna finna be having no more. No more condoms after the second. Nope. Child, child, please. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of these babies, though, we, so we talking about Nick Cannon. So the word is Nick Cannon is could possibly allegedly expecting his ninth baby, and the baby mama is supposed to be someone who was, I don't know if she's still currently, but was a wilding out girl, which is Nick Cannon's show on MTV, Wilding Out. Now, Nick Cannon, bruh, what's going on? What is going on? He got a cannon. (laughs) He got a cannon, and he's busting cannons. He busting shots. <laughs> he busting <laughs> <Left or right. laughs> He is busting shots, busting cannons everywhere. And uh, how many of those babies are since the pandemic? Since 2020, March. I believe four. So let's break it down. Let me pull up my notes. Nick Cannon has Twins by Mariah Carey, 
and they are 10 years old. Then he had a four-year-old son. Okay. That makes three. Then he had a daughter. That's 11. 11? Months. Pandemic baby. One. Then he had two five-month-old twins. Pandemic baby two and three. And then he had the son that passed away a month ago, and that son was five months old as well. Pandemic baby four. Yeah. And then this would be the one on his way. Pandemic baby five. Nick Wink. <laughs> Man. Four or five piece. <laughs> Man, Nick Cannon. Bruh. When you ain't working on set, he is working at home <laughs> in the bed in quarantine. He need the condoms, don't it? <laughs> he need the condom. It can He might need to he might need to be the one that come out yeah. with the first condom song. <laughs> ain't nobody they go like he ain't use them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he wouldn't be able to sell it, huh? Nah. Yeah, listen, it'd be funny, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes I'll be, well, I can't really talk. I don't have kids at all. um, So I can't, you know, there's a lot of joys with being a mother and, and having to experience motherhood and in his case, you know, in your case as well, fatherhood. But <laughs> nine kids, I mean, Boosie got like nine too, don't he? Nine or 11. Little boost. Uh, he got about he got about eight or nine. Yeah, I don't think he hit double digits yet. I mean, maybe maybe they bring in, maybe they bring in the old way of thinking back. You know, back in the day, our grandpas and you know grandmas and oh, yeah, stuff. The they had a lot of yeah. They they were brought up with eight, nine, ten siblings. So maybe that's what Nick Cannon and and, and Boosie are doing. They they're bringing it back. I guess he just trying to, he got so much wealth that he just trying to leave it and spread it out amongst his people, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's good. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you can best believe all of the baby mothers on on the day Nick Cannon pass away and leave this earth. And they, you best believe they'll be at that courthouse fighting over a state. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be a huge fight over his estate. Oh yeah, and uh, you know how I live. Who? Kick Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. Let me see how old Nick Cannon is. The reason why I ask you that, cause <coughs> I don't think that's the last one. Oh no, it's not gonna be the last one. I'm sure it's not gonna be the last one. He forty one. He forty one. Yeah. This ain't the last got, one. I think he got a 15 piece in him. <laughs> <laughs> a 15 piece, 20 piece. I think, he, yeah, I think he got a 15 piece. Yeah, ensemble. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess. I mean, like you said, he, he can financially support them. And I'm sure the mothers are decent people who, you know, got their own coins as well. So, I mean, if he if he like it, I love it. Right. And speaking of, so people have been talking about this Janet Jackson documentary um, that came out. And basically, everybody is highlighting, we're going to talk about men sleeping around. Everybody is on Jermaine Dupree's neck. They cutting him to shred, shreds on social media. For cheating on Janet Jackson. How could you do it? How could, How you, could do? you do it? <laughs> could you cheat on Janet Jackson? I wouldn't do it. I couldn't see it. No, I'm saying, he... if you was in that position, say, for instance, you was a millionaire, you had, you know, got a name for yourself, and but you had the opportunity to date an icon. Janet Jackson, yes. And that's going to be the reason why you don't do it. <laughs> I want to see what was so special about the person you did it with. Uh, 
Why you do it? Why? Why? Why was it her? Uh, that was you just got caught. Uh, you were just having some fun. If I can remember correctly, I thought he was. I thought the the lady that he cheated on Janet with was a stripper. And I mean, he is here in Atlanta, he and up. he's into that nightlife. So he got caught up. But was it she worth it? Yeah, and who told? I think to this day, I think JD regrets doing that to Janet. Of course he do, because he wish he would have married her. We all, I be looking at the little interviews, and, and when they talk about it, he kind of get caught up. A little, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, he don't want to talk about it no more. Right. That's the one that got away. Well, JD, you, you just... Ugh. Of all people, I mean, J.D., he a cool guy. I'd have met him in, in person a couple of times. Um, he's a cool guy. He's not the most He's not the most handsome, you know. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying he's not the most handsome or anything like that. So you would think, I don't know, sometimes it'd be, it had to be something else. But sometimes it, it'd be those type of guys who ha- have the biggest egos, they they be narcissistic, they think the world, re- you know, revolves around them, they think they're a gift to every woman in this world. But he was able to get her, though. He was able to get her, right, and his ego was just swollen. And he didn't care. He took advantage, I think. He just took advantage of that opportunity. He didn't, you know, apparently. He didn't realize. He, he, didn't realize. Just, he thought he had a regular woman. He thought he had a regular old plain Jane. <laughs> she didn't deserve a special privilege. Oh, what? What? No. Man. She got me. Yeah, let, got let, me let me come across <laughs> a, a billionaire icon. Man, do you think I'm going to screw that up? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh. That's how I know men, y'all men, y'all men are retarded. You get caught up, man. Sometimes y'all retarded. You start thinking, thinking with something that ain't got a brain. <laughs> and that's the problem. That's what that's what make you guys retarded. Yeah. Y'all don't make oh, yeah. y'all don't make great decisions at all. Temptation is a motherfucker. Yes, it it is. But anyway. So what do you guys think, think, think? I mean, you know, like I always say, you know, people that tune in, what do, what do y'all think? What are y'all y'all opinions on it? You can always leave a comment um, on your favorite podcast platform or you can, I've lo- I'm uploading right now the full audio on YouTube so you guys can leave comments as well and let us know your opinions on the situation. You could talk about, the HIV vaccine, and, and let us know your thoughts there. Um, you can talk about Nick Cannon and his babies, upcoming babies and future babies. Or you can just leave your comments about Jermaine Dupree fumbling the bag with Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you just say you don't fumble. He fumbled <laughs> the bag. He lost the fumble. Right, lost the fumble. But anyway, well, thank you guys for tuning in as always. And thank you to AG. I I enjoyed you. Until next time, everybody. We'll see y'all later. Peace. Don't forget, straightforward with Miss B. Please subscribe to us on all streaming platforms and follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. We're everywhere. So follow us and we'll be sure to follow you back. Until next time.